Today on Making the Space, we're going to take a Northern Tool 4x8 steel trailer and convert it to something a little bit more useful with, by using the welding lab at uh, Open Public Lab. So I uh, went to Northern Tools, got a trailer, assembled it, put everything together, got it all functioning, working, had to make a couple additions to it, make a couple modifications. Right now I am at uh, Texas Iron and, and Metal uh, to get a um, extruded metal to go on the deck. The idea is uh, rather than putting plywood here and all the way back, we're going to put uh, metal and then cut it down the middle so that uh, it can still hinge. I did make a couple changes. Um, one was um, all of the uh, cable I put into wraps and then zip tied to the bottom. So I got about $20 worth of uh, cable conduit. It's flexible. I still need to get a little bit more and then get some uh, electrical tape to finish some electrical uh, wraps. And then the locking nuts to keep the back trailer down. Um, I actually got wing nuts because uh, I don't want to carry a wrench with me when I do this and it's so much easier just to lock this with a wing nut and, and that the uh, head goes in the other side and then the wing nut just locks right down. Um, I did drive it, it did loosen up a little bit so I'm going to have to figure out what to do there. Um, I actually lost one of the nuts while I was driving because it didn't tighten enough. So, you know, I might have to come up with a different solution. The wing nuts might not work everywhere, but uh, it was worth a try. Um, I did lose one while I was driving. So, vibration is an issue. Might have to use the locking nuts. Um, I do have those as available. <clears throat> I did need to get a uh, 1 and 7 8 inch ball because um, I had a 2 inch. I did not realize it was different but it clearly says one and seven eighths inch. Um, I also had to get a, a connector and then I need to uh, wire wrap that with uh, some, some wire tape. Uh, the electricity didn't work at first because the grounding wire wasn't there. So I need to make it more permanent so that the uh, ground wire stays there and everything works. But uh, right now we're just waiting on uh, the guys to bring over the uh, sheet steel so I can weld it to the base. Given that the wing nut didn't work, I thought I'd try a, a Clovis pin and cotter pin, as well as a, a bolt-on D-ring to weld to the side of the chassis. The uh, D-rings for four of them are about $15, and a box of Clovis pins can be anywhere from $10 to $25. Uh, using just four of them is about a $10 cost. And so given that I'm only going two miles, I did a simple ratchet on the edge here, on the edge here, and then tied it down at the corners. Uh, it looks like one of them is a little loose up here, so I'm going to have to redo it. Uh, these are not good anchor points. I'm going to have to put uh, something a little stronger. That's a good anchor point. But so a couple things to note about the extruded steel. One is, it's not exactly 8 feet by 4 feet. It's a little more than 4 feet. It's a little more than 8 feet. And we have to cut out notches for things like the bolts that are in the trailer. The notches for the bolts are relatively easy to cut out. It's a straight cut along the extruded steel. Cutting across the steel so that we can fold the trailer is a little bit more complex. Uh, it does require a grinder. It does require multiple cuts because the uh, fold is not exactly clean. You'd like to make it a little bit short of the fold so that it folds nicely and folds against each other and doesn't grate metal on metal, metal as it's folding. In the first cut, it was to fit the back side of the trailer. The second is to take a little bit off of the front side of the trailer so that we don't have metal folding against metal. Since we're going to weld the extruded metal straight onto the trailer and it's going to be a, a fixed asset and it's never going to come off, 
uh, we first need to grind through all of the paint that's on the trailer. This means taking the metal off, making sure it fit, making sure we cut around all the holes, all of the uh, bolts, and then uh, grinding all around the trailer so that we can weld metal to metal and not have to uh, burn the metal burn the paint off as we try to weld. So with the trailer prepped and everything staged and ready, we put up partitions around the trailer. We get our uh, welding equipment, our gloves, our safety glasses, and our welding machine and tack weld the, uh, the extruded metal straight onto the trailer, making sure that we keep it square and rigid using clamps, keep everything clamped down. This was probably the funnest part of the, the project upgrade was uh, actually getting to build, uh, you know, with a welding machine and use the equipment that uh, we've been certified to use. With everything welded, uh, it's time to unfold the trailer to see if it adds too much weight, if it's too cumbersome or burdensome to uh, maneuver it, manipulate it and play with it and see if the uh, clevis pins work for us. The final step is to get some treated 2x4s to act as uh, stops in the front and the back and in the side. And having access to a wood shop, which is right across the hallway from the, the welding shop, makes it simple and easy. We cut some uh, slats that can fit into the brackets that are on the trailer, and then we create some cross braces that get screwed into that. So the overall cost of our upgrade is about $210, with 150 of that being the steel deck. Add about $20 to paint everything, and we've got a completed trailer for about $250 upgrade. The D-rings are probably the most valuable part of the change here, and these I just tack welded to the side and then spray painted on top. Uh, the strapping uh, ties to the D-ring much better than it does the brackets. And we can fit a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood or 4 by 8 sheet of insulation on top of this. And it's a very useful trailer. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.